The FE is out and about for Galaxy. This fans edition is supposed to be the light-hearted version of all the Samsung flagships we got to review this year, which would be the S24. So, by extension, this is the S24 FE. If, if I'm going to be brutally honest, I would say that this is just like a lighter packaged, slightly better, slightly not so much better version of the S24 Plus with a new but not so new chipset, uh, a lot of similar specs, and at a much more comfortable price tag. So the main selling point here, so the main selling point here is the lower cost of adoption, but also some AI smarts in between. So this model is designated to be, you know, the affordable gateway into the Galaxy AI ecosystem, which they've pretty much built in a way to be seemingly better than Google's own suite of AI features. So the S24 FE starts at 256 gigs at 2999 and 512 gigs for 3599, which is up there. But I've seen a lot of sales these days and that price has gone lower since then. Whereas if you're gonna hunt for an S24 Plus now, the S24 Plus comes at 3,999 ringgit for 256 gigs and the 512 gigs is 44.99. And the main difference here out of the get-go is the S24 FE only comes with 8 gigs of RAM, which is still fine and acceptable, whereas the S24 Plus would be 12 gigs of RAM. The S24 FE is actually quite speedy as an everyday phone. That Exynos 2400e is quite nice and snappy. It does the job when you want to do daily tasks. It specializes in taking care of AI tasks as well. There's dedicated resources for that if you're really into using AI in your everyday life because the Galaxy AI suite is actually quite long and quite extensive. We've seen it on the S24 Ultra. We've seen it on the Z Flip 6, Z Fold 6. This entire year, they've been pushing AI and it's even gone up to their tablets, which is quite nice. The, the difference in build quality between the Plus and the FE are quite similar. But of course, the Plus has the leg up. The FE comes with a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the front and back, whereas the 24 Plus is Victus 2 front and back. So in terms of durability, obviously, we're going to lean towards the more expensive model. But you see, here's the thing. I mean, this is not exactly a make or break. It's still under the Corning umbrella, just that one's more strong than the other. And it translates to the price, and that makes sense. The size of the device is pretty much what makes it like a softer version of the S24 Plus because it's also the same screen size, 6.7 inches. This time, this is a Full HD Plus versus 1440p, and they both go up to 120 hertz. And of course, this is not an LTPO panel, so you don't get that extremely variable refresh rate from like 1 hertz all the way to 120 hertz compared to the LTPO panel on the S24 Plus, which will give you that flexibility. And why this actually matters is because this is um, a panel's little impactful way of trying to save battery life because when you're doing something not so intensive and not so resource heavy it will drastically reduce its refresh rate so that you know it's less power consuming whereas the s 4 fe just alternates between 60 hertz and 120 hertz which you can configure and choose in the settings or just let the phone decide to alternate between these two on its own and i'm all for it as well because you know ltpo is useful and it does save on battery but battery is not technically a huge concern on a phone like this because at 4700 milliamps battery life is seemingly quite okay you get slightly more than a day's use if you're just doing stuff like work taking photos in between listening to music and using some ai in between you know you're editing photos using ai uh, in photo assist or in the gallery app or you want to interpret some languages here and there when you're talking to a foreigner so like that's kind of typical you know this doesn't exactly stand out like oh it has really long battery life like the s24 ultra but it gets you home with a decent amount of charge. And speaking of charge, it charges up using 25 watts, pretty standard fare for all things Samsung, and it takes slightly over an hour, like an hour and 10 minutes to fully charge from a flat bat. But of course, you know, in other aspects of performance, such as gaming, you want to obviously want to look at this between the S24 Plus. You know, it's a similar chipset, 20, Exynos 2400 versus 2400E which is on this FE, but they both use the same GPU. So performance should be quite similar, right? If you're gonna play normal mobile titles, this phone is just gonna chew this up. That's really nothing for this phone. It doesn't even stay hot or even warm when you're playing games like Mobile Legends. But when you're playing more intensive titles like 
Withering Waves, which is a huge open world game, just like Genshin, you will be getting some pretty varied performance depending on how liberal and how conservative you are with your graphic settings. For a game like Withering Waves to run well, a mix of low to medium graphic details was needed to be configured to run a stable 45-60 FPS because, you know, open world game, a lot very resource hungry. And yes, it's, I guess, smooth up to that point. It does play things in a very stable fashion and the temps weren't like burning my hands exactly. So I guess in that sense, you know, you can play AAA titles just like, the, just like those, but I would always feel that people who buy a phone like this aren't exactly gamers. People just look for a phone like this to get work done, take nice photos, and you know, because it's one UI, complement things like your Galaxy Watch or your Galaxy Buds. Because there will be a trend now where people are deciding to buy like, they buy into the whole ecosystem. You know, you have 3000 ringgit to buy a phone, 3000 ringgit balance to buy your wearables. And that makes a lot of sense so that you can keep everything in a total budget. So I guess this makes a lot of sense because you get the one UI, you get that seven years of updates and you get to use your Galaxy Watch 7, your Ultra, your Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, Galaxy Buds 3 2 Pro. So it's just a matter of what is your aspect of using a phone like this in your daily life. If it's for gaming, yeah, you can. Triple A just pass. Simpler games, Absolute smashes it. 2400E is strong for that. And of course, doing your daily tasks with your one day battery life and one hour over charging. Now, as for cameras, this is a triple camera setup. It's got a 50 megapixel main, an eight megapixel telephoto, which goes up to three times of optical zoom and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. The only difference here is the S24 FE has just eight megapixels and the 24 plus has 10 megapixels. And on the selfie front, 10 megapixels versus 12 megapixels. It's very minute in that sense. But either way, the S24 FE shoots exactly like the S24 plus. Photos are really, really nice and sharp. I love the colors, especially on the wide. Samsung's ultra-wide approach is always really good. Lens distortion is always corrected really well. Everything stays symmetrical. The level of detail is still there as well. The telephoto does take a little bit of hit because, you know, I guess between 8 to 10 megapixels, there is some little world of difference to see in terms of finer detail because you're zooming all the way in. So I guess that's the only leg up that the S24 Plus truly has. And as for selfies, if your common sense has led you anywhere far in this life, you should very well know that, you know, as long as you're in good lighting, you're gonna take really nice selfies. And I think that the S24 FE takes pretty decent selfies and you're not gonna really choose between this 24 FE and a 24 Plus over just how good the selfie camera is. This is a very general purpose phone, not exactly shining in particular aspects like, you know, playing games and whatnot. It's more of a phone that you can use for work, uh, for social media and everything else in between every day. One UI is always incredibly polished. It's also the only company other than Google to give you that seven years of updates, which is the longest right now. If you're looking to buy a phone like this, Keep it simple. It's for work, it's for social media, and a little bit of fun in between. You're not losing too much versus the S24 Plus because you know that gap is pretty wide. A thousand over ringgit, you get only a slightly better screen, um, a very more or less level of performance, which I feel like the price justifies because the gap is there. Um, slightly better cameras on the 24 plus but like I said it's on the telephoto not a lot of people might be truly looking into this in an ultra detailed way and it's also a very affordable way to get into decks where you can connect this phone to a monitor and gain the desktop experience that you know the more expensive galaxy options have always been giving you since the earlier days so if these aspects are important to you I can tell you in good conscience that I can recommend a phone like this because it just does everything well and you still get a day's battery life to get you home with a decent level of charge and that's about it. This has been the S24 FE, I'm Sender Geek, and I'll see you guys in the next video.